Hi, I'm Laura Emptage, and this is Steph. Uh, from Sprightly Events, and today we're here with Jacqueline from Jacqueline Phoenix Hair and Makeup Artistry. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Sure. So I've been doing hair for about 11 years now. Um, I was in a salon setting for the first five and then started freelancing after that. Um, just about three years ago when my children were a little older, I started doing weddings pretty much every weekend. Wow. Awesome. Uh, what should brides look for when they're hiring a hair and makeup artist? Um, I think it's important that you check out social media and find somebody whose aesthetic is close to what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, talk to friends and family that have had hair and makeup that you enjoyed in the past. And yeah. Facebook reviews, um, bridal websites and pages are a good place to look as well. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. Yeah. So, so when most brides are picking their hair and makeup, do they just like look through magazines or Pinterest and then come to you with a picture or do they just kind of say, I don't know what I want and then you give them ideas? Um, I get a mixture of both. It's definitely preferable when a bride will come prepared with Instagram posts that they like or a Pinterest page full of ideas. Um, even if you have pictures of things you don't like, that's helpful so we can, oh, that makes kinda, sense. Yeah, yeah, so we can figure out exactly what it is you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Cut. I'm going to go let the cat in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how, how much is that cat in there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you recommend that brides do a trial for hair or makeup or both? I highly recommend trials. I've actually gotten to the point where if a bride says she doesn't want a trial, I'm hesitant to even book the wedding because... Oh, interesting. It, it removes a lot of the stress the day of if you yeah. go in with a game plan of what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and the number of times that I've had a bride come to me with a picture of what they think they want, mm -hmm. and then they end up leaving the trial with something completely different. Oh. Yeah. A, yeah. a lot of the times you have to see it on your own head with your own hair to make it a decision whether that's what you really want. Yeah. That's sort of like the engagement session in photography, like taking the stress yeah. out of the big day because yeah. you've worked closely yeah. with your people. That and, and it's yeah. nice to get to know each other yeah. too. Like it changes the dynamic the day of when you've already built a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now if a bride's booking hair and makeup for an entire wedding party, mm -hmm. um, but she, is she the only one that's getting the trial or how does it work for all bridesmaids? Um, Typically, just the bride gets a trial. Sometimes you'll get a maid of honor who wants to do it too, or sometimes, uh, quite often actually, they'll be the mother of the bride who will want to get a trial done as well. Oh, okay. I know yeah. you think about that. Yeah, yeah. that's smart. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah. Um, for a trial, is there anything that brides should bring with them, or do before, or prep in any way? Um, we typically just ask that they come with clean, dry hair, mm -hmm. without product, without any prior styling. Um, and if you have any accessories the day of, it's good to bring those as well so we can fit them into the, the, the hairstyle. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Floral yeah. crowns, veils. Um, not necessarily that. the floral crowns because a lot of times they're fresh, but a lot of times people will have like the barrettes or the clips and right. mm -hmm. yeah. Not necessarily a veil, but it's good to come with an idea of whether you want to place the veil on top or Underneath. below. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's always a big question on the day. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I find if the, the hair person's left and they haven't put the veil on, the bride's always like, does it go this way it, yeah. or this way? And yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Are a lot of people doing flowers in their hair still? I've seen a little bit of it. Um, yeah, like a handful. Not so much like the flower crowns, but like a nice yeah. like floral accent. Yeah, I'm like, a big fan of. Yeah, I think that's really pretty too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like that? The floral in hair? Yeah. Yeah, and Jacqueline's amazing at like weaving floral like in oh, the hair. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah no, I, I love working with like organic materials. It's oh, cool. a lot of fun. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does fake tanning if, uh, affect makeup at all? The only way I can see that affecting makeup would be if you did a trial without a fake tan mm. and mm. then the day of you had one. <laughs> Hi, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you did your trial without a fake tan and then the day of you had one, you might have to alter a lot of your look because things are going to look a lot different on tanned skin versus natural skin tone. Yeah, yeah. that's smart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how far in advance are people booking you? 
I am currently, I have weddings booked as far in advance as October 2021. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, does it ever happen that somebody comes for a trial and they walk away with what they think they want and then on the wedding day they change their mind? Yes. It's <laughs> very stressful, but I do always make a point of letting them know that if you leave after the trial and the day of you decide you want something different, like, we'll accommodate you. Of course. Yeah. How do you keep your makeup looking good all day? Um, skin prep is big, so a good moisturizer, a primer, um, using high quality makeup, and then following with a setting spray is usually my formula for mm -hmm. makeup longevity. Yeah. Do brides ever want you to use their own makeup? Is that a thing, or do you um, always it use your? It it could be a thing. Yeah. Um, if somebody has really sensitive skin and or they like know a favorite lipstick or something or... I typically actually recommend brides bring their own lipstick okay. because if I do your lipstick that's all well and good but then after you've had a few drinks and eaten your supper you're going to need to touch up and I'm not going to be there to do it for you so yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any tips or tricks that you offer brides for either hair or makeup or my biggest tip is just be true to who you are and your aesthetic because if you're somebody who wears your hair in a ponytail every day and then the day of you go for some big frilly updo you're gonna look back at those pictures and feel like it's not authentically you and that could yeah. be a regret so yeah. True. yeah my wedding day i wanted to wear my hair in a ponytail and people were like really <laughs> it's your wedding why would you want a ponytail and i just knew you'd feel more comfortable. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I look back at my pictures, and even though it was like 10 years ago, it doesn't look 10 years ago. It looks like it could have made me any day up until now. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's nice. I was going to say about people feeling comfortable with their hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. When people are feeling uncomfortable in their dresses or their hair and makeup, that mm -hmm. comes across in the photos. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. And I do hair full time, um, like cuts and colors. And I have a lot of clients who will come to me and get their hair done and we're just chatting about their weddings and a lot the biggest regret I hear about weddings is I didn't like my hair oh. mm. so yeah. it's really important to make sure it's something that feels like you right yeah. um does makeup or hair follow trends in the wedding industry or is it just kind of whatever's true to them well, for sure for yeah. sure there's been like a big push in like the bohemian bride in the last few years so the makeup looks have been quite natural and pretty much every updo I have done in the last couple of years has had breeding of some variety, <laughs> I, I like which that. I love. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, I like those like braids that sort of look like faux hawks. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like Dutch braids? Yeah. Yeah. So they're like the inverted French braid. Yeah. Yeah. They're my favorite too. Yeah. <laughs> How much time should the bride schedule for herself and her wedding party the morning of for hair and makeup? Um, I like to a lot an hour per service. Okay. So an hour for hair, an hour for makeup per person never takes that long. It's just nice to have that buffer for any kind of thing that could go wrong. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Nice. What's the biggest wedding party you've had? Mm. Um, I did a 10 where I did all 10 updos myself and the makeup artist did all 10 makeup. Wow. That's yeah. Awesome. Really? You that when we started at 4 a.m. Oh, Ooh. okay. Yeah. What time was their ceremony? Do you remember? Uh, 10 or 11. Oh, that's, Ooh, that's yeah. Yeah. like a brunch ceremony. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That makes sense why you started yeah. at 4. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. What time is your favorite time for a ceremony to start? <laughs> Stick her in the bedroom, um, Tom. Maybe she'll... Favorite time for a ceremony to start? Um, <laughs> I honestly like later ceremony, like a four. Yeah, me too. Just yeah, it's really time, four. Right? Yeah, yeah, less time for there to be the in-between and... Less stress. Yeah, because a yeah. long cocktail hour is never fun. No. So. Yeah. But then we, we, I want the first look before the ceremony. Yes. You want it at the ceremony. Yeah. So if it's at four, it's harder to fit the photos in. It's true. Do you enjoy getting photos of you doing makeup from the wedding day? Uh, in <laughs> theory, I enjoy getting photos from the wedding day. In reality, I'm always making some kind of ridiculous face <laughs> or like really deep in concentration <laughs> and no idea what's going on. How about you? For behind the scenes shots? Yeah. No, I always try to stay out of the photos. Yeah. It's like always Yeah, it's also. really Sometimes awkward. Sometimes I get an album back and there's like the side of me or like something. I'm like, oh, I just didn't quite dodge it. Yeah. But, 
I get a lot of awkward photos of myself back because of my brothers oh. doing like light testing. He'll test on me, and I'm just like, boop doo. Yeah. But I can delete them. I'm definitely, <laughs> a, I'm definitely a behind the scenes person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> hmm. You need a good ending. Yeah. Do you want to do a thanks for tuning in? Sure. You take it this time. I did it last time. No, I did it. Thanks for tuning in today. If you'd like to find more information from Jacqueline, you can grab her Facebook or her Instagram at Jacqueline Phoenix. Uh, hair and makeup artistry is my Facebook page, and my Instagram handle is JacquelinePhoenix.hmua. Thank and you. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, and of course, like and subscribe. Yeah.